Hello and welcome back, your lovely faces, to another video here on the channel. This video, ladies and gentlemen, is disturbing and it does contain a lot of horrible things. I'm going to put that out there now, so if you do not want to watch it, I do understand. But General Zod, great guy, had some fun with him on his streams. Over the weekend, he put out a couple of tweets regarding his uncle. His uncle had passed away. And his uncle was one of the main accusers of the WWF, now WWE, of accusations of a lot of horrible stuff that happened. We got numerous bits here that we're going to look at. And we just want to get this story out there for Zod and for Zod's family. Because the WWE, they should be held accountable. Well, no, not the company. Vince McMahon needs to be held accountable. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we got, starting off with WrestlingNews.inc. We also got two other uh, websites to look at regarding the situation. So, this is the first one. Tom Cole, former WWE ring boy who accused officials of this and this, has passed away. Tom Cole has passed away due to this, according to a post by his brother, Lee Cole, Zod's dad. Cole worked as a ring boy in the World Wrestling Federation in the late 80s and early 90s, and later alleged that Director of Wrestling Operations Terry Garvin, real name Terry Joyle, done this to him. It was also alleged that ring announcer Mel Phillips had a weird fascination with his feet, and Pat Patterson done that to him. Pat Patterson was one of the first openly gay wrestlers in the business. Cole alleged that a top official grabbed him numerous times and he was driven to a WWE's official's house where he was asked to smoke this, snort that and do this. Cole says the official refused to take him home when he refused the advances and he was fired the following day. All three of the men accused, which first of all, at the time, they were not named, but they all resigned. Pat Patterson, however, he was brought back several months later. According to court documents, Cole says he was later offered $55,000 to return and work as a crew member. The allegations were covered all over the media at the time, including an infamous episode of Donahue, with Vince McMahon addressing allegations from Cole and other people. And that episode, I actually watched that years ago, because I do remember it 100% because they started laughing in it. As soon as you start watching it, you got the audience laughing, you got Donahue, who was the uh, the host of the show, he's saying about wrestling, oh, this, 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 that, and everyone starts laughing. And it's not a laughing matter. So what we got by here as well now, guys, is from the June 7th, 1993 Wrestling Observer Newsletter, which is written and owned by Dave Meltzer. So... Tom Cole, the WWF ring boy who was largely responsible for much of the negative publicity that surrounded WWF last year, has filed a $1.6 million suit against Titan Sports, Pat Patterson, Mel Phillips and Terry Garvin this past Tuesday. This is a long involved story with many twists and turns. The lawsuit is a three-parter. Part one reopens the claims of all of this in the nature by top WWF officials. Cole first brought forth these claims last year in a front page article in the San Diego Union. The story didn't name any names, but did detail certain situations and had other ring boys claim all of this was prevalent. Almost immediately, Patterson, Phillips and Garvin, who were the three men Cole's initial claims were about, but whose names had yet to be brought to the public, almost immediately resigned. Patterson was brought back several months later, but Phillips and Garvin never returned. Cole's attorneys brought forth a complaint that was settled before a lawsuit was ever filed. The settlement was an agreement between Cole and Titan Sports last year in which Cole received $55,000 and was rehired as a ring boy and offered a tryout as a ring announcer. As part of the settlement, according to the complaint, Cole agreed to never bring up his charges again and Titan agreed never to ask him to retract his initial charges. The lawsuit claims... Titan breached that settlement agreement by failing to give Cole a tryout as a ring announcer, which is largely the crux of the new lawsuit, a breach of contract, and also said Titan continually attempted to get Cole to go public and retract his allegation charges. The third part of the suit claims that Titan officials attempted to get Cole to sign an affidavit 
stating things that weren't true about his brother, Lee Cole, who at the time was going on several radio stations and making claims. Tom Cole in the suit claims he didn't want to sign it, but finally did, because they wouldn't allow him out of the room until he signed it. And the suit claims he was falsely imprisoned, which if he couldn't leave the room, then yes. While this isn't certain, given the wording of the Titan lawsuit against Phil Mushnick, it can be ascertained that the statements Cole signed claimed Mushnick and Lee Cole had conspired against Titan and induced Tom to create an untrue story, which may have been a key point in the lawsuit against Mushnick. Given the circumstances of what came out publicly during the time, the specific charge of imprisonment sounds curious on the surface, since it was well known publicly at the time of the, of the year split between Tom Cole and Lee Cole. This new suit also does not name names when it comes to specific charges, by specific individuals, as the previous complaint did, and also doesn't detail incidents of anything as the initial complaint did, which is also curious. Now, they do go on to show Lee Cole, so Zod's father, with a couple of tweets that he sent over the weekend regarding it. My brother Tom has passed away. Vince McMahon and his wife Linda let do this into their companies years ago and did everything possible to cover it up. And this is actually one of the things, because the Donahue episode, which I will leave a link to below so you can go and watch it, is it's rather disturbing. Like I said, I remember, I have watched it again today, and I'm like, yeah, I remember all this. When they start laughing, they're starting to snigger and everything else, and it's almost like the audience are like, oh yeah, whatever, men don't get that. That's exactly what this feels like. And again, this is back in 1992-93 when this show aired. But what we're going to look at as well now, guys, is coming from Mike.com. But it was actually a news report by the Business Insider. So this is what we got. WWE co-founder Linda McMahon allegedly ignored claims of this at the wrestling company. This is from October last year as well now, guys. In the months leading up to the presidential election, yes, where conspiracy theorists and Trump supporters have leaned into all of this, that the Democrats are part of a powerful ring of these. So then it goes, according to a news report by Business Insider, Linda McMahon, the co-founder of the WWE, who is now in charge of Trump's biggest super PAC, agreed to hire a ring announcer who was suspected this as long as he stopped chasing after kids. Before serving in Trump's cabinet as head of the Small Business Administration and joining his super PAC, McMahon ran the WWE alongside her husband. The duo reportedly allowed Mel Phillips to continue working for the company, despite accusations of this against him by young boys. According to Business Insider, which reviewed hundreds of pages of court records and conducted several additional interviews, the McMahons paid off one of Phillips' accusers. Tom Cole, $55,000 and offered him a job as a crew member after the accusations were made public against him in the 90s. In a statement to Business Insider, WWE attorney Jerry McDevitt said the only persons implicated were not senior officials, nor were there any claims of anything approximating conventional forms of this. Instead, a young former employee claimed Mel Phillips had a foot fetish and played with his feet. He also claimed that any allegations against the McMahons were classic liable. Then it goes on to say a former high-level employee for WWE told Business Insider the McMahons clearly knew what was going on, but really did nothing to stop it. In a 92 column for the New York Post, Phil Mushnick wrote that Vince McMahon had confessed that he suspected Phillips had an unnatural interest in young people, and even fired him before bringing him back in 88. McMahon hit Mushnick with a lawsuit, but in a deposition, Mushnick further described the conversations where McMahon and said he and Linda had known for some time that Mel had a peculiar and unnatural interest. Despite the investigation into all of this, the illegal transportation of this across state lines, Phillips nor anyone in the WWE ever, would they were never charged. The history of all of this were also never brought during McMahon's confirmation hearing, even though it had been flagged by the Trump transition team. And it goes on, you know, saying, you know, as other conservative movements face reckoning. But there we have that one there. But then, ladies and gentlemen, we have another one from 2019. So this is now going back two years. You can literally find so many stories regarding this entire situation and the cover-ups WWE have done ever since they started. So this one... WWE's history of allegations detailed in recently released document. This is June 24th, 2019. 
Linda McMahon, part of Donald Trump's, yeah, going on. She was also CEO of WWE for a long time. Before she could be appointed that job with Trump, she needed to be vetted. So documents have been re revealed online and they include some serious talking points. Previously covered, a slew of red flags pointed out in the 21-page document, but they also pay special attention to the history of this against WWE. So these are the ones that were brought uh, forward mostly. Under the heading title, McMahon's WWE has faced numerous complaints of this. They include the following events. Sable, who is currently Brock Lesnar's wife. World Wrestling Federation female wrestling star Sable filed a $110 million lawsuit in a Connecticut federal court last Thursday, alleging all of this unsafe work conditions and steroid abuse in the WWF. Sable, whose real name is Renee Murrow, sorry, excuse me, Merrow, alleges that WWF instructed her to expose her and someone smeared do this on her personal belongings, according to a TV Guide interview. She also says male wrestlers punched holes into the walls between the men's and women's dressing rooms to view female wrestlers. Miss Merrow said she didn't see WWF wrestlers using these, but she speculates that a lot of the tempers that rage during the matches can be attributed to roid rage. According to TV Guide, she has to be released from her contract and be able to retain the rights and profits from future merchandising of the name Sable. Then we got Tom Cole, Zod's uncle. Tom Cole, now 20, started working for WWF in 1985 as ring boy, a gopher in Yonkers, New York, when he was 13 years old. Cole said that while on tour with a wrestling show, a WWF employee would film Cole with a video camera while fondling the boy's feet. He had a foot fetish. He would play with all the young boy's feet for hours at a time. Phillips. Cole said he was harassed by several employees. He said he was grabbed numerous times by another top official, Pat Patterson, but never said anything because he was scared. Cole said all of this continued unabated until he was fired in February of 1990 after rebuffing an advance by still another WWF official. In that incident, Cole said he was driven to the official's house where he asked what we talked about earlier. Next thing you know, he was fired. And then it goes on, Murray Hodgson. Murray Hodgson, a former television announcer who was fired in August 91, filed a lawsuit last month in Connecticut, alleging that his termination was a result of his rejecting a sexual advance by a WWF vice president. Murray is also the one who was actually on the Donahue interview, and he's there, and he just rips into Vince and is awesome. Pat Patterson resigning after the stories. Faced with all of these uh, scandals, Senior Vice President of Wrestling Operations, Pat Patterson and Vice President of Wrestling Operations, Terry Gavin, resigned March 2nd. Ring announcer Mel Phillips has also resigned. But then it goes on to state about Barry Orton and Nicole Bass, or Bass, however you want to say it. And this is absolutely disgusting because these people should be held accountable. But they weren't. And obviously, you got people who, in the comment sections of a couple of these recent ones regarding Tom Cole, they're like, oh, they should just get over it, it was all dealt with. No, that's not the point. The point is, nothing was done about it back then. When you're young and you want to get into that kind of business, and these people come on to you, and you have no idea what's happening, because when you're 18, 19, you have no idea what you want. Your brain is all over the place. Your brain is literally mush. It's still trying to uh, comprehend what's going on. And it stays with you. And when you're a victim and people keep going, oh, whatever, get away, that is going to drive them to guilt because they're going to think, why me? You know, why? It must have been me. It must have been me, which is absolutely horrible for them to go through. And obviously, with Zod's uncle, this is gone now and... The McMahon should be held accountable. Not WWE, but the McMahons themselves, which obviously would include uh, the business. But Pat Patterson died last year, so he can't be brought up. He's gone. He basically got away with a scoffery. you got other people, though, who are still around from that time, and they were doing it. They need to be brought up. They need to be investigated and everything else. But when you have McMahon, who basically, let's face it, Vince McMahon is a powerful man. He's got power everywhere. People need to literally now stop subscribing to WWE Network, not watch it. Here in the UK, it's on BT Sport. Again, if you've got BT Sport, you've got it just for the wrestling, get rid of it. There's plenty of good uh, websites where you can get it for free. 
And that's what I do. Anyway, I've been doing that ever since uh, they, <laughs> you had to start paying for pay-per-views here in the UK, which was like 10, 12 years ago. But when you have this, it needs to be looked into, investigated thoroughly. Not by independent uh, you know, investigators like my man said he had been done, which he never, because nothing came out of it. But if you want to look into it and you want to watch the document, well, not documentation, sorry. If you want to watch the Donahue sit down, it is 44 minutes long, the link is below. This is going out for General Zod to try and get the word out there so we can help him and get the word out saying that, well, these people kept it under wraps and this is dangerous and it's absolutely despicable of them. If you are new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell for future updates and I'll see each and every one of you soon.